Hello, my name is Ronald Kim. This, the fifth and final video in our series on the morphology of Classical Armenian, is called Verbal Morphology 3. We will discuss derivation and non-finite forms. Here is the roadmap for this video. We will talk about verbal derivation and then look at formerly pr productive suffixes, those which were productive in the prehistory of Classical Armenian, but apparently no longer by the time of our surviving texts, and productive suffixes, those which remained completely productive at the time of the composition of Classical Armenian texts. We will then finally look at non-finite forms, such as the infinitive and various verbal adjectives and nouns. Classical Armenian has several derivational suffixes for firm forming verbs either from verbal stems or from nominal stems, meaning nouns or adjectives. Some are fully productive. That means that new verbs can be formed from virtually any stem. Others were productive at an earlier stage, but apparently no longer are by the time of Classical Armenian in the golden age of the 5th and 6th centuries AD. Let's begin with the formerly productive suffixes. Denominatives in M as a type are inherited from Proto-Indo-European. Originally, they were proper to O stems only, to those nouns belonging to the O stem inflectional class, but were extended to other stem classes. As you will see from several of the following examples, this must have remained productive into the Parthian period, the period of Parthian domination in the early centuries AD. We have examples such as to ser, love, sirem, I love. We have tagawar, king, originally crown carrier, tagawarem, I rule as king, I am king. We have tsarai, servant, tsarayem, I serve, I am a servant. And finally, anun, name, with a genitive anuan, and denominative anuanem. I name something. Notice that these last three examples are to uh, stems that are not O stems, respectively the A stem Tagawar, the E stem Tsarai, and the N stem Anun. In addition, we have Bzishk, doctor, an Iranian borrowing. From that is formed Bzishkem, I heal. We also have the borrowing Nishanak, sign, and Nishanakem, I denote, I make clear with a sign. So as these two examples show, this particular suffix must have remained productive into the period of Parthian domination when many Iranian loanwords came into the language. There are also factatives in M, meaning to make something X, typically associated with adjectives. So we have to the ostem surb, pure or holy, right? Serbem, to make holy, to purify. To the astem azat, we have a meaning free. We have azatem, I free something, I make free. To the ustem manor, with a funny ending r, small, we have manorem, to make small, to break into pieces, into small pieces. Finally, showing that this type too remained productive into the Parthian period, we have the Iranian borrowing hnazand, obedient, Hanazandim, I obey. I make myself obedient, in other words. We also have some factatives in am. This is an inherited Proto-Indo-European formation found in other older Indo-European languages, such as Hittite or Latin, but has largely been replaced in classical Armenian by m. So there are not too many examples. To yois, hope, we have yusam. Note with the entirely regular vowel weakening, I hope. To ors, hunt, or catch, we have denominative or some, I hunt, chase, catch. Let's now turn to those suffixes that remained completely productive into the classical Armenian period. In the first place, we must mention the causative and factative suffix utanem with aorist utsi. So what we have, in other words, is a suffix, utsi, note the third singular, oits, right? So we have vowel weakening in all the other forms of oi to u. And in the present, we have 
the familiar present forming suffix on. That's the morphology of this particular formation. Let's look at some examples. The first example is the verb to turn, intransitive, literally to turn oneself. We have darnam, I turn, eris dardzai, I turned. So here the root is dards, and to that one can form dardzutanem, turn transitive, I turn something. Aorist dardzuti, I turned something. Once again, transitive. Let's look at the next example. Usanim, I learn. Aorist usai. So here, the root is us, and we form to that usutsanem, I teach. Aorist usutsi, I taught. Notice in both of these cases we have third singulars in oits. Dardzoits, he, she, it turned something, transitive and usoits, right? He or she taught. Finally, showing how these suffixes can combine, let's look at a denominative such as tagawarem, I rule as king, I am king. Aorist tagawaretsi, and although I didn't include it here because there isn't enough space, third singular tagawaryats. Well, here we have tagawarets, right, as the aorist stem, so to that we will form tagawaretsutsanem. That's right, that means to make king, make someone rule as king, make someone be king, and the aorist is tagawaretsutsi, with the third singular tagawaretsoits. That means I made someone king, I made someone rule as king. There are also a few causatives with other suffixes, and I should note that the origin of all of these types, both the productive oits, utsanem, as well as these smaller types, remains disputed. Here are just a few examples. To elanem, go out, exit, we have a causative eluzanem, not with a tz, but with a z. We have to kornchim perish, korusanem, to make perish or destroy. Here, the consonant is an s. Finally, to the antonym of elanem, namely mutanem, go in or enter, we have mutsanem, not with an aspirated tz, but with a voiceless non-aspirate tz. Mutsanem, to put something in, to introduce. So these are smaller, unproductive types. And just be aware that the shape is the same as the productive type, just with a different consonant. There is also a completely productive fientive suffix, anam, which can form uh, denominative verbs to pretty much any base. We have hast, strong, solid. Hastanam, to become strong. We have Iranian borrowing, such as azat, free. Azatanam, become free. Another Iranian bor borrowing, anmah, immortal, right? Anmah, and anmahanam. I become immortal. Here's a nice borrowing from Greek. Hetanos, heathen. Hetanosanam, become a heathen. And note that this remains productive all the way down to the modern period. In texts written in the late 19th century, we have forms like yelektanam with a modern pronunciation. Become electric. For example, Yerevan yelektanai. Yerevan goes electric, right? Uh, you know, electricity, when electricity came to the modern Armenian lands. Let's now look at non-finite forms. So far we've looked at only finite forms that agree for person, for number, for tense, mood, aspect, voice. Let's now look at the non-finite forms, beginning with the infinitive. The infinitive is simply formed from the present stem by adding an L. Note, however, that it is indifferent to voice, so presence in im form infinitives in el. That means that to a verb like sirem, I love, the infinitive is sirel, to love. But to sirim, I am loved, the infinitive in classical Armenian is also sirel, which in this case means to be loved. Only from post-classical texts onwards do you find siril with the stem vowel e. For a verb like luanam, where there is no distinction of voice in the present, you're not surprised to see that the infinitive also is ambiguous with respect to voice. Luanam means wash, 
I wash, I am washed. The infinitive luanan means to wash or to be washed. Finally, arnum, I take or I am taken. Infinitive arnul, to take or to be taken. Classical Armenian has verbal adjectives. The two most common are formed regularly to the infinitive, hence also from the present stem. There is a gerundive in edots, which denotes necessity or obligation. So we have the infinitive sirel, to love or to be loved. Uh, and sirelots is an adjective, meaning something that is to be loved. Latin amandus, right, which must be loved. We have a gerundive in eli, which in contrast denotes possibility. So sireli is something that can be loved, right, lovable, Latin amabilis. There's a very important past participle in ial. It's important, why? Because it enters into periphrastic constructions that express things such as perfect or pluperfect. Well, first, how is it formed? It is usually formed not to the present, but to the aorist stem. So we have, for example, berian brought to the aorist stem bear. Remember, that's one of exactly four verbs that has an identical present and aorist stem. Here it's clear, the kial, and that is to the aorist root lik, with vowel weakening of e to zero, or rather schwa, right? The present stem there is le kan, le kanem, I leave, but le ki, aorist, I left. So it's clear that the past participle is formed to the aorist stem. Uh, there is one exception. In the case of verbs in m or im with weak aorists, weak aorists containing the suffix ts, you have some fluctuation. So you can have either siretial, loved, or sirial. Once again, the past participle is very important in classical Armenian because it enters into periphrastic constructions. These typically have the subject in the genitive, about which you will hear more in the videos on syntax. Here's one simple example. Nora e gortzial. Literally, that one, or in this case, he, genitive singular, so of him, is made. And that is the way to express the equivalent of the English present perfect. He has made. Finally, there are a couple of agent noun formations, but these do not become productive until post-classical times. There are agent nouns in au or o with a vularized L. Uh, some of these mean one who habitually X's, does X. So we have tsnauk to tsnai, right? Bore or gave birth, so the ones who give birth, tsnauk, parents. And we have pahol, one who fasts, to pahem, I fast. One who fasts has the connotation of one who habitually fasts, right? Not just once, but repeatedly. This becomes productive in post-classical Armenian. Not that many of these forms are attested in, strictly speaking, classical Armenian texts. It becomes productive later on, and this is the source of the modern present participle in og with modern pronunciation. So to berem, carry, berog, carrying, to gerem, write, gorog, one who writes habitually, in other words, a writer. Another important uh, type of agent noun, agent nouns in um formed to medial passive presence. Once again, these are not yet productive in classical Armenian, despite what one sometimes reads. So to the verb terchim, fly, we have, well, one who flies around, meaning a bird, right? That's been lexicalized, terchun, bird. To chausim, speak, well, one who is able to speak, who speaks, a rational being, Chausun. Finally, to gitem, no, we have gitun, knowing one or wise person. This becomes productive in the later language and is the basis of the modern Eastern Armenian present indicative. That's why the present indicative looks so different uh, from that of classical Armenian. You have to the root tes, present indicative tesum em, literally the seeing one I am, so I see. And the inherited form tesem survives only as the present subjunctive, that I see. 
This concludes our series of videos on the morphology of classical Armenian. Shnor Hakalutun, thank you for your attention.